Once upon a time, in a little workshop by a river in a small mountain village, a master craftsman made the most beautiful brass instruments, noble trumpets and elegant French horns and sonorous euphoniums and jolly trombones and the occasional pompous tuba. And people came from all over the world to buy them and take them back and play them in their orchestras. And the master craftsman knew that his instruments gave great pleasure to many people. But he said to himself one day, I would like an instrument that is for my pleasure, an instrument that no one else will buy. He looked around at all of the instruments who were so proud of themselves sitting on the shelves in his workshop and he thought, not exactly like that. And he went back into the back of his workshop and with a great deal of clanging and banging, there was a lot of activity and finally he came out with a lead pipe and an aluminum drain funnel. And he held it tenderly in his hands and he said, this is perfect. I will call it my frugal horn. And he stood there for a moment, cradling the frugal horn, and the frugal horn was very happy to be held in these loving arms. And then the master said, now, my little friend, sing to me. So the frugal horn began. said, what? What's wrong? I only have two notes. How can I sing music with only two notes? And the master said, ah, my child, you always have more gifts that I have given you than you know. Imagine this, though, that sometimes we discover our gifts by letting go. Okay. said, even with this preposterous thing, I only have four notes. Looking around at all the other instruments, he said, look, they all have valves and slides and wonderful tubing. Could I have a little of that? Then I could play real music. And the master musician said, ah, my child, you will never know your beauty by comparing yourself with others. You do have a faucet. That's not even a whole note. The little frugal horn was distraught. He said, look at me. I'm surrounded by all these beautiful brass instruments and I'm ugly. I'm just a little lead pipe. I'm not an instrument. You're just making fun of me. And all those other instruments are laughing at me. And the master could not convince the little frugal horn that he was actually quite pleased with him. The little frugal horn refused to sing a note. And he sat there on the workbench in that workshop for days and refused to sing a single note, absolutely certain that the master craftsman was just making fun of him and the other instruments were just laughing at him. He couldn't bear it. And finally, he ran away. He went off on his own, left, left that little mountain village. He finally found work in a nearby estate, working with their hunting party. It was a perfect job for him. It was his two best notes. But it turns out that what the master had said to him was true. The master craftsman had put in him a spirit of music that could not be suppressed. Well, that wasn't the way it was done. And besides, 
A lead pipe is extraordinarily difficult to carry on a horse. So they let him go. He walked out from the house, dejected. As he walked through the garden, he thought, if only I had some valves or a slide or a little bit of tubing, I could play real music. And there he spied exactly what he needed, a little bit of garden hose. He went off by himself and experimented and thought, maybe this is what I need to make truly wonderful music. Why, yes. Ah, he was so pleased. And he marched off confident that he could find his way in the world of music. Well, he ended up doing what a lot of people do when they don't know what else to do. He joined the army. And he found his place in the bugle corps. was, again, that spirit of music that the master craftsman had put in him, he could not get rid of. That wasn't the way it was done. And besides, the lead pipe is really not according to military specifications. So he was discharged, but he still knew he could make beautiful music. So he went on until he came to the big city. And there he discovered in these little clubs, musicians who got together and played, and he played with them. And after a while, he got to be quite the jazz musician. to see the little lead pipe that played jazz. And he would play wonderful things, and they were so pleased with it. Mm, on and on it went. And afterwards, they would say to themselves, that's pretty good, not bad for a lead pipe. He hated to hear that because he didn't want to just be not bad for a lead pipe. He wanted to be a good musician. And he came to resent the fact that he was a lead pipe. He was in this awful place of wanting people to love him for who he was, and at the same time, hating who he was. He didn't know what to do about it, and then he remembered what the master craftsman had said, that sometimes we find our gifts by letting go. And he wondered if he could make beautiful music without the lead pipe at all. So he tried. A little nervous at first to see what it would be like. better and better. People came, people listened, people loved it. He was finally free. He decided that instead of being known as a frugal horn, because it was free, he would call himself Freddy. Freddy met a lot of other musicians, including a cute little tin whistle. He really liked her. Her name was Penny. Freddie and Penny became very good friends. They were a beautiful duet. They made wonderful music together. And they really became very good friends. And after a while, Freddie realized how much Penny loved him. And he wondered if she would love him if he knew that he was actually a lead pipe. But he didn't want to find out, so he never told her. He never really thought about it. 
except that it kept gnawing at him in the back of his mind. He kept trying to ignore the fact that he was really a lead pipe, but it kept staying with him and he actually wanted to be able to just be himself and not have to pretend. And the more that sadness sat in him, the more he tried to ignore it, it festered and became bitterness and anger. And it came out in his music. People didn't want to hear that. They stopped coming. He got more and more angry. He got in fights with other people. Nobody wanted him around. After a while, he couldn't get any more musical gigs. He just sat in his apartment by himself feeling bad and pretty soon he had no income at all. The only thing he could find was singing in a cathedral choir. Churches always seem to be desperate for men to sing. It wasn't exactly his kind of music, but it paid a little bit. He didn't get any happier. He never saw his friends, never saw a penny, just sat alone. Now, the music director at the cathedral was a wise woman, and she suspected that somehow this little Freddy had more music in him than he was letting on. But she didn't know quite how to draw that out. One day she said to him, you know, Freddy, we're doing a new cantata, and I would really love if you would sing with us because we need more musicians, but I really am hoping for somebody who can play some lower notes. Can you sing any lower? Now, little Frugalhorn didn't know if she knew that he was actually a lead pipe, but he knew that with his lead pipe, he could sing lower. Hmm, but that would be hard. People would see his lead pipe. They would know. But that cantata paid a lot of money. And then he thought, you know, of all my friends in the jazz world, none of them go to church. They won't see me. I'll be all right. So he decided to do it. He went back to his apartment the day of the rehearsal, he dragged out that old lead pipe from under the bed where he'd stashed it, dusted it off. As he put it together, he realized he hadn't played that thing for a long time. He wasn't even sure he remembered how his four and a half notes went, but that didn't matter. He still had his tubing and he could play good stuff. When he got to the cathedral, it was quite a crowd of musicians that had gathered. And suddenly he realized that among them, there was Penny. He was terrified she would see his lead pipe. He tried to hide it. He tried to pack up and sneak out the side down the aisle, but she saw him and she ran after him and she said, Freddy, where have you been? I've missed you so much. Oh, my friend, how are you? And he said, uh, uh, look, I'm fine, I'm fine, but I gotta go, okay, go away, go away. And she said, no, no, I haven't seen you, are you okay? And she saw his lead pipe and she said, oh, is that yours? No, no, he said, it's not mine, it's, it's, I can't, I can't explain now, but I gotta go, okay, I gotta, just go away, go away. Well, she was terrified that he was treating her like that. She wouldn't go away because she loved him. And she kept hanging on to him as he tried to run out the door of the cathedral. She tried to put her arms around him and say, Freddy, can we talk? And he said, no. And he pushed her. And she stumbled backwards and fell down. The steps of the cathedral tumbled into a big pile at the bottom. And she looked up at him with such tears in her eyes reaching up toward him, and he wanted so much to run down the steps and apologize and take her in his arms. But he froze right there and he realized he really was just a lead pipe. 
and not worthy even of penny. And just then, the church bell started to ring and he was frozen with fear and with guilt and he couldn't run down those steps. Instead, he did the only thing he knew how to do. He ran away. He ran as fast as his feet would take him as the bells of the church faded in the distance and he ran until he could run no more. He was too tired and then he walked and he kept walking. He didn't know where he was going until late in the day when he realized where his feet were taking him. He had nowhere else to go but home. The little Frugelhorn walked that long road back to the mountain village. A gentle spring rain began to fall and he wished so much that the rain would just wash away his sorrow. But all it did was fill him up with water. He walked all day and long into the night. And by the time he arrived in that little mountain village, the rain was falling quite hard. And he stood at last in the garden of the little workshop and wanted so much to just walk through that door and go inside, but he couldn't. He stood frozen in fear and sorrow out in the garden, and all he could do was quietly sob to himself. Well, even with the sound of the rain pounding on the roof, the master craftsman heard that voice and he knew exactly what it was. It was changed a little, but surely it was his little frugal horn. He came thumping down the steps and across the studio and out into the garden. And there he was, his little frugal horn, his friend. And he took him up in his arms and he said, Oh, my friend, you're back. I've missed you so much. You were gone so long. Are you all right? Of course, the little Frugelhorn couldn't say a word. And he brought him inside and he cleaned him off and emptied off water out. And he said, ah, oh, my little friend, I've missed you. Surely you've been on a long journey. You have stories to tell. Are you all right? And still, the little Frugelhorn could not say a word, just trembled and felt the wondrous feel of the master craftsman arms around him. And finally, after a long time, the master said, my little friend, you are tired and you need rest. You will rest and in the morning we will talk. And he carefully laid him on the workbench, bid him good night. He blew out the candle and he went upstairs to bed. Well, the little Frugelhorn sat on the workbench and he could tell even in the dark that all those other instruments were probably laughing at him. He quietly cried himself to sleep with the rain outside sobbing right along with him, the rain seeming to cry the Frugelhorn's tears it cried with such passion. The rain rained down on the mountains and it threaded together in little rivulets and gathered in the ravines and they bunched together and braided up into little streams that poured into brooks that piled into the river and the river rose as the rain fell and it rose farther and it rose up over the banks and it flooded through the streets of the village and it became a torrent and the flood battered open the doors of every little house and every building, even the workshop, and it blew open the 
door and the water rushed in and it broke open the windows and the rain and the wind came pouring in and they blew all the instruments off the shelves and the water swept them all away and crushed them in the mud and blew them out the door and they all were swept down the river and all night long the torrent blew right through the workshop and upstairs the poor master craftsman could do nothing to stop it and he waited and waited through the thunderous noise and the terror of the night until finally in the morning when the flood had subsided and the water all flowed away the master craftsman came downstairs and there was nothing but mud every single instrument had been swept off its shelf and crushed and flowed down the river there was nothing at all in the studio at all except for what was too heavy to be swept away a lead pipe just the lead pipe the master craftsman took it up in his arms and said oh my little friend my heart is broken now more than ever i need for you to sing me your song. Well, the little Frugalhorn was terrified. He hadn't sung with only his lead pipe in so long, he didn't remember what it sounded like. He couldn't even remember those four and a half notes. But the master craftsman looked at him with such love. And the little Frugalhorn could feel that love stirring in him. And so, trembling with fear, yet moved with love, the frugal horn began to sing. Master Craftsman smiled such a lovely smile and despite all his losses was truly happy and so was the frugal horn the end